even I can look at this photo and I can say, whoa, it put tears in our eyes when we walked in there. I've seen photos and images of children that have been malnourished. And I'm telling you right now, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Oh no, really? Yes. Imagine finding your baby daughter lifeless in her crib. How would you react to this gut-wrenching sight? Would you call 911 immediately or wait over an hour before doing so? While most see their child as a blessing, some narcissists are so devoted to their ideology that their offspring ends up paying the ultimate price. This was the case for Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari, whose devotion to their beliefs led to the horrific death of their infant daughter. The horrifying story of Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari, convicted of first-degree murder and child abuse after their 10-month-old daughter, Mary Welch, died of starvation and thirst in August 2018, shook the nation. Mary had no muscle mass and weighed only 8 pounds when she died alone in her moldy crib where she had lain for 19 hours before found. In this episode, we will reveal the shocking facts of this case where evil parents let their innocent baby starve to death. This is a story that will make you question everything you know about faith, family, and justice. So tune in now for today's bite-sized true crime recap. Monster Parents, the Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari story. Tatiana grew up in New York with her single parent father. Reports suggest she struggled with drug abuse and had a few minor run-ins with the law as a teen. When she was 20, she went to Grand Rapids to reconnect with her mother. However, this reunion soon turned sour when her mother kicked her out. Alone and in her early 20s, Tatiana set out to complete her degree in early childhood education and development at Grand Rapids Community College as she dreamed of opening a daycare center. It was during her time at Grand Rapids Community College that she met Seth Welch. The duo clicked instantly and after only a single date, Tatiana moved in with Seth. Tatiana later described Seth as flirtatious, engaging, and charming. What she did not know, however, was Seth's obsession with conspiracy theories and his mistrust of medical science. Seth was brought up in a conservative Christian household. He also did not believe in vaccination and refused to vaccinate any of his children, declaring on Facebook that it doesn't seem smart that you would be saving people who weren't the fittest. If evolution believes in survival of the fittest, why are we vaccinating everybody? Shouldn't we just let the weak die off and let the strong survive? When Tatiana became pregnant with their first child, she and Seth moved into a farm near Cedar Springs. Initially, the farm's produce was enough to support the young family, but they soon realized they needed more cash, so transformed their humble homestead into Blackacre Farm, a booming business that sold fresh produce and honey at the local market. But then, something changed. In a Facebook video, Seth announced that they were ditching their successful brand and becoming stewards of creation. Details of why they made this change are unclear, but it is possible that they did it to attract religious customers. Or maybe Seth and Tatiana felt that they wanted to serve God more intentionally. Seth said they were putting God above everything else, even money, and that he would continue to sell his farm's produce, but without any profit. Seth became more obsessed with religion, sharing his radical views on his private Facebook page where he condemned anyone who didn't follow his strict interpretation of the Bible. He often preached that parents who don't discipline their kids are raising evil heathens. When their first child, Elizabeth, was born, there was a significant amount of THC, a compound found in marijuana, in her system. The hospital alerted Child Protective Services, but with the lack of any evidence suggesting that this was due to parental neglect, Seth and Tatiana were let go with a warning. Unfortunately, investigators would later realize that this was a huge mistake. Soon after, Tatiana started working at McDonald's to make ends meet, leaving Seth to be a stay-at-home father. From the authorities' perspective, everything was normal at the small farm near Cedar Springs, but the condition of their home was anything but normal. It was only on August 2, 2018, when 911 received a call from Seth Welch that the truth began to be revealed. The transcript of the 911 call on that dreaded day paints a shocking picture. Seth called the authorities and said his infant daughter was dead. However, the 911 operator felt there was something off about his tone. He was too calm for someone who had just lost his daughter. When the operator asked Seth to put the phone close to the daughter's mouth so he could listen to any noise of breathing, Seth reiterated that Mary was dead, declaring she was as dead as a doornail. When the operator asked Seth if he was holding up okay, he replied, you know, just another day, 
you know, it just is what it is. Needless to say, this is not how a father who just lost his daughter reacts and was the first red flag for investigators. The 911 responders who arrived at the farm couldn't believe their eyes. The house was straight out of a horror movie. It was a nightmare of filth and decay. Flies swarmed over every surface, and the deceased baby, Marianne Welch, lay on a rotting, stinking mattress. She was skin and bone, and the size of a newborn baby despite the fact that she was almost a year old. She weighed only 8 pounds, with bruises and sores all over her tiny body. Her eyes were hollow and lifeless. A female officer later said she would never forget that haunting sight. It was a scene from hell. Mary's lifeless body was taken away by the coroner. An autopsy revealed that Mary Welch had died of starvation and thirst. She suffered for weeks, maybe months, slowly wasting away, too weak to cry or move. She bled from her nose and foamed at her mouth. Her organs were damaged and inflamed. Her bones were brittle and hollow. She had no blood cells to fight off infections or carry oxygen. Following these discoveries, Seth Welch and Tatiana Fusari were arrested and their heinous crime revealed to the world. The initial investigation revealed several flaws in the couple's statements. When asked when Mary last fed, Tatiana said she had breastfed Mary just before going to her shift. When Seth was asked the same question, he said this was not true. Mary was not breastfed and instead, she was being fed all the good stuff namely chicken, potatoes, apples, and cheese. At the same time, he acknowledged that she was skinny, but justified this, declaring, everybody in my family's always been skinny. During the investigation, Tatiana was visibly gloomy and terrified, tearing up whenever Mary's name was mentioned. Seth, however, was entirely different, appearing calm and collected. He acknowledged that Mary's death was sad, but shrugged it off as the will of God. When asked about his immediate reaction to discovering his lifeless daughter, he said that he had actually seen a lot of deaths on the farm, so it was nothing new. Seth drawing a parallel between his infant daughter's death and the death of a farm animal was another red flag to investigators that they were not dealing with a normal man. Perhaps the most important discovery during the investigation was Seth's delay to call 911 when he discovered his lifeless daughter. Instead, he called his parents and his lawyers, and only then, upon the advice of his lawyers, contacted the authorities. His internet search history revealed that after calling 911, he also sent a message to someone about a goat and Googled a rapper's kidnapping details. Clearly, he was not distressed about his daughter's demise. When the couple were asked whether they thought Mary was ill or not, they initially said no, saying that they always believed that Mary was just a slow grower. However, after extensive questioning, they eventually admitted that their daughter had been weak and underweight for some time. They did not seek medical help for religious reasons and feared that Child Protective Services would take their children. Soon after the investigation concluded, both Seth and Tatiana were charged with first-degree murder and child abuse. The moment they were charged with these crimes, their reactions were caught on camera and ended up becoming a viral internet sensation. While the judge read their crimes, Tatiana cried while Seth remained unmoved. Once it was announced that they would be facing up to life in prison if convicted, Seth's face dropped to the floor. Bizarrely, Seth didn't believe he was ever going to be charged, let alone convicted. The couple pleaded not guilty to the charges. The case went to trial, during which the jury witnessed a sudden shift in Tatiana's narrative. She told a new story about how Seth was abusive and stopped her from properly taking care of their children. Tatiana testified that she initially thought she had found a loving partner in Seth, but soon realized how wrong she was. She said he betrayed her trust and cheated on her with another woman. When she caught him on a lewd video call with a lover, he reacted violently. He pushed me away and cursed at me. He said this was his house, his rules, and he could do whatever he wanted, Tatiana said, going on to say how Seth then forced himself on her. I tried to fight him off, but he was too strong. He slapped me over and over again on my face. She supposedly felt trapped and alone because he had cut her off from her friends. He'd say I was his property and I had to obey him. He'd say he'd kill me if I ever cheated on him. According to Tatiana, the abuse apparently escalated to a terrifying level with Seth threatening her with a gun, narrowly missing being shot in the head by him. She also described another horrifying incident where her husband tried to perform an exorcism on her while she was pregnant with Mary. He was reading verses from the Bible and hitting me hard on my back with his hand. He was shouting things like, demon be gone. The jury found several loopholes in Tatiana's story. For one, her stories only emerged after the couple was convicted of their crimes. Tatiana said nothing during the initial trial. As well, 
Tatiana never called the authorities about any of Seth's abuse over the years, nor did she take action to help Mary, whose health was deteriorating rapidly. Finally, in November 2021, both Tatiana and Seth were convicted of first-degree murder and child abuse. Both were sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Religious extremism, alienation from the real world, and distrust of medical science can be a potent combination, which, in the case of 10-month-old Mary Welch, had tragic consequences. Throughout Seth and Tatiana's trial, the narrative took unexpected turns. However, the weight of the final verdict reflected the horror of what they had done. The case of Mary Welch serves as a stark reminder of the dangers of radical beliefs and the need for child protective services to ensure that no child pays the price of their parents' negligence. Sadly, Mary couldn't be saved, but have the authorities learned enough to prevent other children from suffering a similar fate? It's too early to say, but for now, Seth and Tatiana's two other children are safe with their grandparents, out of reach of their monster parents.